open the page. I don't want to hear you say that. Put that umbrella around the one take it off you. Warum? John Bailey is working with English teacher Sophie Halaka. <laughs> Sophie is going to peer observe design and technology teacher Sheila Vecria with John in attendance. There's five groups and then you've got a starter to do. Sheila's teaching graphics to a mixed ability year nine class. Right. What you're going to do today is we're going to learn and understand about sequences and processes. They enjoy their hands on lessons but she's worried that they find the theory boring. You've got to put that in the correct order, OK? What but is there really be? such a divide between the teaching of theory and practice? John wants to see if the perspective of an outstanding English teacher can throw up some new ideas. Also, you're going to produce some flowcharts. Does anyone know what a flowchart is? What does a flowchart show? Yep. The order of something. Well done. I was just wondering, with the flowchart idea, it was kind of introduced to them as something new. I did ask if anyone, if anyone had ever done a flowchart and hardly anyone put their hand up. Yeah. So um, I had to do the lesson as if, you know, they'd never done it before. A diamond shape is what you call a decision. Anyone know what a decision is? It's like a choice you have to make. A choice that you have to make, OK? Everybody has choices. If you don't make a choice, then there's no right, wrong, or you can't move forward. Cos I was wondering if whether there's a way that you could tease out, even if they weren't sure that they'd had... that they've explored that concept of flowcharts mm -hmm. before, if you could have explored the word flowchart, so um, to break it down into flow and chart and oh, kept okay. them thinking about yeah. what those two... And they what would've... they mean. Yeah. yeah, it might have just created a little bit more discussion around... Um, them sort of hypothesising what a flowchart might be and then maybe it might have triggered a few <laughs> dormant memories about them mm -hmm. having been doing something mm -hmm. similar previously. This should help you to do your own flowcharts. OK? So it's a flowchart for a vacuum formal. You've got to put these in the correct sequence. If you can think back to when we learnt about the vacuum formal and the process of how you might use it, because you put the mould in the vacuum form. It is a vacuum form. Yeah. And then this one is second. That's this one. Secure. Miss, we finished. Um, your statements are in the wrong order. So if you want to rearrange your statements, OK, a bit? That's right, excellent. Right, you've now got a flow chart. You've got to use that to help you do your flow chart. Okay. The only thing that slightly confused me, probably because I'm not a technology expert at all, was whether you wanted them to focus on their understanding of a vacuum former, or whether you were still focusing on um, how Putting to it use into the flow sequences. chart. Yeah. Um, I think it was just getting them to think of how sequences might work. It could have been anything. It could have been, I could have given them something to, a flow chart, you know, process of making a sandwich or something. Yeah. But I thought I'd give them something that we've done already. Um, maybe I should have. I could have tried uh, something that they may have done in everyday life. Yeah. So I don't know. Do you think there would have been a difference in terms um, of how they responded to the task? There might have been. They might I was have related if, to it a lot better, yeah. I don't know. I was wondering if you'd chosen something almost slightly ridiculous, like okay. showing a short film or, you know, something, a little cartoon or something, yeah. and getting them to do a flowchart with that. So that reinforced their, their knowledge of the symbols yeah. mm -hmm. and then apply it to the vacuum formula, which is slightly less chart, yeah. um, humorous for them. <laughs> <laughs> right, girls, um, I'm just going to go through the vacuum forming process. A couple of groups have already done it. Right, place plastic sheet above the mould and clamp securely. So what do you think the next decision is? Is the mould positioned correctly? Great. If it's positioned correctly, what's next? Is plastic sheet secured? Great. I was wondering, with a group that age, uh, whether it would be possible to tell two or three different flowchart stories before they got started on something like a vacuum flow and get some language going about 
what flow charts are good for, um, how you decide what to include in a flow chart and how you leave out. Yeah. Um, it would be really useful quite early on in the process. Ideas like, no, that's too much information or mm. there's not enough information um, or um, uh, why is that step useful? Mm -hmm. uh, if that kind of stuff had been in there. Do you understand how a flow chart works now? Yes. Is there anyone who's... The theory's over sure and it's time to design a key ring with the aim of creating a flow chart of the you process. Lesson, as soon as Sheila's focused on the practical aspects of the lesson, her instructions become very that. precise. Your keyring needs to be simple, OK? Could just be your name on it with an outline. If you remember, you've got to make sure that the page is on A4. Your cutting lines are all red, and the line must be 0 0.001 millimetres, OK? So all the computers are on you to go away. But while you're doing that, I want you to take notes. I'm going to give you a scrap piece of paper. Take notes of the things that you're doing. And then we're going to make it, and then you're going to do your own flow chart. I noticed that when you were giving them the instruction to move to the computer in the cold drawer, it was almost as an afterthought that you said, and you need to make notes. And I think some of them had already kind of whizzed off towards the computers because they're excited about doing that. Whereas maybe if um, there was more focus on the actual note taking, mm -hmm. and I guess you could have. Could you have modelled it on the board? Would that have worked on the yeah, cold draw and then yeah, maybe have done the notes? Yeah. And really, I guess what you were trying to tease out of them is that their notes would be the basis for their flow chart. Yeah, yeah. And I think some of them weren't quite connecting the two. Yeah. They were like, oh, right, now we're making a key ring. Mm -hmm. And they didn't think, yes, we're making these notes because we need to do a flow chart later. Yeah. I think one of the things that we're teasing out here is that the more structure they have, that is the clearer the idea of what they're being asked to do, the more likely they are to be independent. So I think what you're saying, Sophie, is it's, is it's a good thing to hang around for five minutes, talking a bit more about what a flow chart is, playing what a, with what a good one and a bad one would be like, because what you're doing is storing up, uh, you're giving them resource for when they can go independently. I think another <coughs> thing that we're talking about is how children come to understand the objectives of the lessons. Mm -hmm. Lots of times children go into lessons, they spend the, the first three or four minutes copying out the objectives of the lesson. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Yeah, I, and I, I think, I think, oh, don't do that yeah. because, um, yeah, I, <coughs> either we're going to teach them the objectives of the lesson or we're not. Yeah. But, but hang on, just before you take my head off. But on the other hand, I'm all for children having a plan. Of, of the lesson. That is to say, I know what's going to happen here. I'm learning some skills here. Then a bit later on, um, that's going to come in handy because I'm going to have to write a flow chart. Yes. I, I, I like having that kind of, of journey. The contrast John wants the Sheila to watch Sophie's lesson to see how her rigorous approach to grammar is closely linked to the act of creative writing. And our learning objective... Ethel, can you read it for me, please? How can varying our sentence length and structure create effect and help the reader understand our ideas. OK, so how can how, what we do with our sentences and how we create variety in them, how can that help our reader to understand our ideas? So remember when we talked about whenever we do Shakespeare or when we do look at poetry, we think about what the writer is doing and what effect that has on the reader, OK? And two things that we're going to need to think about are tense, as in past, present or future, and making sure we keep that consistent, and our punctuation, OK? So remember the work we did on varying our punctuation, and that's going to help us varying our sentences. Blindly copying down objectives, I think, is completely pointless. But I think if that's giving them a little bit of time to think, and that's instigating some discussion, and that's maybe linking in your keywords and seeing why, why are those words key today and, and having that discussion about how they link into the objective. Mm -hmm. I think then to have it written down, I think quite often makes them feel that it's important. What technique has been used there? The full stop at the beginning, it makes it good. If it makes you just say trapped and then stop, which affects like the whole sentence because it makes, it makes you like know that, some, that this, like, he really feels that he's trapped. Super. Well done. Juhi, what were you going to add to that? It makes you more interested to find out why he's trapped and what, what he's done to be trapped. Yeah, or where he's trapped, exactly. So that one-word sentence is such an easy technique for you to use, <laughs> and yet it can be so effective and create a certain tone for the reader to pick up on content. It allows you to build in more sophisticated language and terminology that maybe you wouldn't if you just kind of touched on it and then left it.
Whereas if you get them to write it down and think about it and discuss it, then you're allowing them the time to let that sink in. It also uses sarcasm, which has, like, a good effect on it, like, it makes it more interesting. It does sound sarcastic, doesn't it? Because it's, like, that contrast between the excitement and the disappointment and then that great, really sarcastic, isn't it? That one word, great. Is it making them feel comfortable about a topic before yeah. you actually go into it? I think so, yeah. OK. And giving them the confidence to feel that they're, they're learning and this is a process, and, but their, their opinion on it is just as valid as yours or mm. of mine or whoever's in, whoever happens to be in the room, that, that aspect that they're going to become the expert on this mm. and just maybe building up the confidence of the individuals by allowing them to discuss it as a group, I think at the beginning. While Sheila chooses to put her class into mixed ability groups, Sophie puts students on a similar level together. How could writers make the reader think about two things at the same time? Um, By like, putting those colons and then like, putting a different sentence in one? I played around with it quite a lot and I found that by doing that, it builds their confidence because they're, they're talking to other people who are at a similar level. And when they're kind of thrashing out these new ideas and words and sort of getting to grips with using more sophisticated language, they're more confident to do it when they're with people of their similar ability. Yeah. Wait, that goes before that, yeah? When we come to this world, it, it looks... Oh, it looks like they like, like hate each other. A lot of time with group work is about building their confidence and about building their sort of willingness to have a go and to make mistakes and to okay. just kind of that bond as a group. That I've written here for you. One of the things was um, some, some, of the some of the pupils were unable to move forward in the task because they weren't quite sure exactly what to do. And now you just said, and it was this table yeah, on that table. Yeah. 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 But for me, it's quite helpful because I yeah. know that... Yeah. So, you, well, so in a way, always... you could pay more attention to that table. Yeah. Than all over the place. Is that one of the, yeah, that's that's such yeah. a good point. Is that one of the underlying models we're talking about? That when you've got a room laid out like this, you give them a task to be getting on with, make sure everybody understands what the task is. Yeah. And then the minute they're on it. task, you're over there like yeah. a you're over there like a sheepdog. Yeah. Uh, and and then you're sort like of working your way back yeah. up. There's a pack of geniuses yeah, over here. Exactly. And and you'll get to them after about ten minutes. Oh, so do you remember when we add a support to a simple sentence, it makes it complex. They've actually made loads of progress this year at this group. At the beginning of the year, they wouldn't speak. And they, had, they were just really lacking in confidence. And just gradually, by working together, they're often the ones who contribute the most. So that could be a target. You could say, have a go at using a one-word sentence for impact. Yes. If you were a year six teacher, in fact, if you are a primary teacher, you'd be pretty explicit with children about what listening means, what cooperation mm. means, about someone who sums up um, every now and then what's going on with the learning so that day by day and week by week um, you're building up an idea amongst children about what cooperative learning is mm. and you're not leading it to chance you're telling them and you're giving good examples but it falls away if we take it I for granted doesn't it yeah i think you can't take it for granted and i think just being so explicit with them and breaking down your language making sure that they understand everything but allowing them to question it and allowing them to understand why you're doing it i think is really important as well